in skies as another airline is strapped for cash go first is uh, filing for bankruptcy the airline has voluntarily moved the national company law tribunal or nclt under the insolvency and bankruptcy code it has suspended its operations and has cancelled its flights scheduled for the 3rd of may as well as the 4th of may go first is blaming pratt and whitney engine failures which have resulted in grounding of 25 aircraft this is equivalent to 50% of its fleet as of uh, the 1st of may Prima. Following the flight cancellations, the aviation regulator DGCA issued a show cause notice to go first for failing to follow the approved schedule, which would lead to passenger inconvenience. This means the airline has violated the provisions under the civil aviation requirements. The airline CEO, Koshik Kona, told CNBC TV 18 that go first was forced to file a case against Pratt & Whitney in a U.S. federal court in Delaware. The airline claims Pratt & Whitney is refusing to comply with an order issued by the Singapore International Arbitration Center. Well, that's the big story, and we've all been aware of it over the last 24 hours. But let's quickly run you through the stock reactions, the stocks which are getting impacted today. So from uh, the uh, lender side, and plus there are uh, many of the Vardia Group companies, there are fears that are there any intercorporate deposits. So from the aviation space, competitors like Interglobe Aviation and SpiceJet are surging in trade. Key lenders to go first, which includes Central Bank of India, Bank of Baroda, are under pressure. And stocks from the Vardia Group of companies, Britannia, Bombay Burma, are also on our radar. And we will talk about all of these different uh, sets of companies as we go along. Uh, but first, the latest from GoFirst itself. Just want to put the numbers on the table. And these are uh, disclosures that have been made by the airline, which is seeking uh, protection under the IBC. So the numbers are important. GoFirst has said that the total outstanding dues that it has uh, across the board to uh, creditors, which includes banks, financial in institutions, financial creditors, as well as uh, the uh, other creditors, the uh, non-financial creditors, which would be vendors, aircraft lessers, that total big number is 11,463 uh, crore rupees. Now, uh, the technicality gets important over here because as of now, as of the 30th of April, there is no default as far as the financial creditors or the banks are concerned. That's what GoFirst has put out in its statement. But it is saying that defaults to the bankers are imminent given the current situation. It is acknowledging that. Uh, there are already some defaults to the non-financial uh, creditors, to operational creditors. That includes uh, a default of just over 1,200 crore rupees, 1202 to be precise, to some vendors. And it has uh, done a default on its operational creditors, which are the aircraft lessers. And that number is around 2,660 crore. So it has defaulted on the lessers, it has defaulted on some vendors, but it has not defaulted uh, on its bankers. And it has moved the IBC. Just on the lessers, uh, the airline has also added that it has received notices from its lessers. Uh, six lessers have invoked letters of credit. And lessers have started action against the company to ground the aircraft and repossess the aircraft. So the, the situation is fairly dire. There's no denying that. Let's take it step by step and get our colleagues to join in on the story. We'll have Abhishek uh, giving us the picture from the creditor's side, from the banker's side. And in a bit, we have Vivek also joining in to tell us if there are any interlinkages in terms of loans between the Varia Group companies, if any of the listed companies have perhaps possibly some sort of uh, you know, uh, lending linkages with Go First. So, uh, Abhishek, let me come to you first on this. Uh, tell us a little more about the exposure that some of the banks uh, have to this airline. Well, Go Air has uh, filed for bankruptcy, so uh, we have certain listed uh, entities who have exposure over there. To start with, Bombay Burma has an, uh, 318 crore of debt to the company, and they have over 32% stake in uh, Go Air as well. So amongst uh, listed uh, banks, we have Central Bank of India, who has an exposure of more than 1,560 crore uh, to Go Airlines. Uh, Bank of Baroda has an exposure of about 1,430 crores. Axis Bank has a small exposure of about 30 crores and IDBI Bank also has a small exposure of a little under 60 crores to the airline. Uh, Deutsche Bank has an exposure of about 1,320 crores uh, to Go Airlines. Uh, these data is sourced uh, from Acquit uh, Ratings who had recently uh, downgraded the ratings on uh, Go Airlines. Back to you. Okay, alright, got that. Uh, thanks, Abhishek. So those are the numbers as far as the 
Lenders are concerned, Deutsche being the unlisted one over there. The rest of them are, of course, listed entities. Let's get, let's get the stocks back because most of them are down between 2% and 3-4%, depending on which one you are uh, checking up. So, yeah, those are the stocks, about 4% on Central Bank of India and BOB down 2.5%. They're the biggest ones in terms of the exposure, not as a percentage of their book, but just in terms of the biggest lenders to go first. We'll get to Vivek in, uh, yeah, I think we have him actually with us now. Vivek, uh, so that's the lender perspective. I guess the other issue that the market is grappling with is whether there is any exposure that other Vardia Group companies have to the airline. And many of these Vardia Group companies like Britannia, like Bombay, Burma are listed. I know you've been trying to work some numbers. Uh, you know, any leads? Well, you know, what we were trying to do is, you know, we were trying to assess the impact that the Vardia Group will face on account of, you know, the insolvency filing by GoFirst. So now, you know, we've, what we've actually done is we've understood uh, GoFirst itself in depth. Uh, number one, you know, the company was IPO bound. You know, the, the latest uh, DRSP filing was on May 13, 2021. So that hasn't gone through. You know, that's been one big setback. You know, the company was also loss breaking. You know, FI 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 has been loss breaking continuously. So, you know, what's the impact as far as the group companies are concerned? First one, the main one is, of course, Bombay Burma Trading Company. So now, number one, it has multiple exposures. The main exposure, of course, is the ownership that it has in GoAir. It has and owns 32.61% stake in GoAir itself. The other important part is, you know, the company also has an exposure in terms of loan. And as per the latest filing that we've gone through, the exposure is to the tune of close to 318 crore. So on the back of that, you know, this particular stock has seen a significant correction in today's trading session. A two-week gain has been given up. Also, you know, biggest fall that the stock has seen in more than a month. Now, the other stocks that are in focus, you know, the other group companies, three group companies apart from BBTC, which is Britannia, Bombay Burma, uh, Bombay Dying, as well as National Peroxide. Uh, you know, all three of the companies in the past had an issue of inter-corporate deposits that they had gone ahead and lent to go first. But as per, you know, the DRHP that we have, it appears as though all of these ICDs have been cleared out and therefore there is no outstanding exposure in terms of loans or deposits to go first from these three companies. So largely, you know, they continue to remain quite separate from go first. But apart from that, we spoke to a few analysts and what they tell us is that one important, uh, you know, metric to track would be the kind of loan as well as bank guarantees that the promoter and promoter group entities have given to go first. You know, and that is something that if gets unwound, you know, could uh, actually have an impact as far as the group companies are concerned. Okay, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that, Vivek. So it appears that Bombay Burma is a stock you should keep on your radar because it owns a 36.5% stake and there are intercorporate deposits to the tune of 300 crore rupees approximately, at least as of the annual report of 2022. But we need to find out what you know the guarantees given by the promoters are. If those guarantees are invoked, then will the promoters need to sell down their stake in the other group uh, companies? So um, that is very important. In fact, to take this conversation forward,